Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we're talking about some new additions to the Too Faced Born This Way line. There are a lot of people that are unhappy with Too Faced right now or have been for quite a while and I totally understand that. A big portion of my audience wants to see this video. Personally, I'm interested in these products. I have a lot to say, both good and bad, about these products. And ultimately, the point of my reviews is to help you make a good decision. If you've already made that decision and you're not buying from the brand or you're just simply not interested, then that's totally fine. And if you want to hear my thoughts, they're here for you. If you're somebody who is part of my audience and you're not interested in Too Faced, I respect you. I love you. No hard feelings on my behalf at all. I promise I will have hundreds and hundreds more videos for you. I get it. However, if you came to this video specifically to say something hateful or damning towards me or Too Faced, it's, it's misplaced energy. The video's already up. If you're watching it, it's uploaded, it's here. I'm gonna sort of tell you how YouTube works and that way I think everybody can be a winner here. Basically, if you watch a video and you leave a rating, which is either a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and you leave a comment, which is either positive or negative, makes no difference to YouTube. They see that as engagement. That lets YouTube know that people are interested in engaging with this content, good or bad, and they like that and that makes them promote that video. If you see content from a creator or about something that you don't like, the worst thing you can do, the most harmful thing you can do to that content is to never click on it. Just don't click on it to begin with. Let YouTube know, I'm not having it, I'm not interested, or click off now. <laughs> Because if you ruin my watch time by clicking off now and not watching the whole video, then YouTube thinks that this video sucks and you've done your part. And I really want to put it out there that if you're somebody that has just cut off, boycott, trashed, whatever, this brand, that is your right. I will not defend anyone to you. I very likely don't disagree with you on the like fundamental basis of that decision that you've made. I've come to a different conclusion. I do feel that we can agree to disagree. I hope that you feel the same way. Whoever you are, whatever you believe, whatever you do with your life, you are 100% entirely welcome here. You are welcome to have different opinions. We all have different experiences. I think that's something that is really beautiful about the internet. I don't shy away from differing opinions from my own. What I do shy away from is just being hateful towards someone because you don't agree with them. Because everybody's allowed to have an opinion, but here in my space of this channel, of this video, of these comments, you're not allowed to be really mean to somebody else. Everybody gets to just exist. And I've gone on way too long about this part. I really hope I can edit this down to make some sort of sense. Now, let's talk about the products. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. All right, let's get into the product info now. We have some new highlighting palettes and we also have a new eyeshadow palette. These are all part of the Born This Way line. I've really been a fan of the Born This Way line in general. I like the foundation. I love the super coverage concealer. I also really liked the powder foundation. I liked the setting powder. Now we have these little highlighting palettes. These turn up the light highlighting palettes come in four different shades. Light, medium, tan, and deep. They're priced at 42 US dollars a piece. They do have this fancy schmancy magnetic packaging, which I really like. This compact is a lot larger than I thought it was going to be. And the eyeshadow is smaller than I thought it was gonna be. So just goes to show you can't tell everything from pictures. Just for size reference, I'm gonna use this Norvina palette. I think most people are pretty familiar with the size of these ABH palettes. So this is how big this thing is. It's pretty large and in charge. It's also pretty hefty. 
It's beefy. Has the classic Born This Way detailing, just a very plain black lid with this little decorative edge, just like the foundation has. And then when you open up inside, there is a mirror in here, and then there are three different shades. Each one of the colorways has these three different shades. There's a glow, a soft focus, and a dazzle. They all have the same name. The glow powder is a baked highlighter. The soft focus powder is sort of an all over like setting or blurring powder. And then the dazzle is a glittery highlighter. I wanna give you an idea about the value in this palette. I know a lot of people have been asking about the soft focus powder and is it similar to the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. I do think that it's the same type of formula. It's got a similar texture, a similar use. When you break it down to price per gram, these palettes look like a really good value. Like I said, they are $42 a piece and each palette contains 11 total grams of powder. So that comes out to about $3.82 per gram. When you look at something kind of similar from Hourglass, I'm comparing it to this Ambient Lighting Trio just because it has three powders in a little small face palette. So it seems like the most adjacent comparison. That Ambient Lighting Trio is $64. It also contains less than 10 grams of product, comes out to about 9.87 grams of powder total. So the price per gram on the Ambient Lighting Trio from Hourglass is $6.48 per gram. When it comes to straight up dollar values, the Too Faced palettes are a much better value, but that's only if they perform as well or better. We'll get to the review section. First, I wanna show you some swatches. I did decide to do swatches of light and medium together, and then tan and deep together. So first we'll take a look at light and medium. I ended up using both of these palettes in the demo portion today. As you can see, that soft focus powder in the medium palette is basically the exact same color as my skin. So it doesn't show up super well, but that does mean that it served its purpose really well. Then when we take a look at the tan and deep palettes, first of all, when I swatched these, I was a little confused because I felt like deep wasn't deeper than tan. They definitely have different undertones. Tan seems a little bit more neutral and deep seems more golden. Maybe it's just swatched on my arm. It just looks deeper than the deep palette. So that's kind of weird. I'm not a makeup artist. I haven't applied these to anybody else's skin. I'm just going off of conjecture here, but I feel like the deep palette isn't really deep enough. It looks pretty light, it looks very yellow undertoned, and I'm sure that it looks good on like a warm undertone, deeper skin tone. But that soft focus powder, it seems really off to me. That's just my initial somewhat uninformed opinion. In theory, having four different color options is a good idea. I just think in execution, it wasn't quite hitting the mark. Could be wrong, especially if you are a makeup artist or somebody with a deeper skin tone. I really, really appreciate your input here, but this is just sort of my initial reaction. I feel like the deep palette isn't really that deep and that's kind of a problem, isn't it? Maybe, I just, I don't know. I just think it is. All right, I was also surprised at the Dazzle highlighter. It just didn't really show up. I knew that this was gonna be a more glittery highlighter, but this is just a little soft wash of glitter. I don't know if they were just going for this whole like soft face palette type of look, but I was expecting a little bit more, you know, bam from that Dazzle highlighter and it just sort of fell flat for me. So I like the glow powder. You'll see me use that in the demo portion. I like the soft focus powder. I do think that looks really beautiful on the skin, but I think some of the shades are off and I think the Dazzle formula just didn't, didn't really do it for me. I was really excited about these palettes and they just didn't really live up to my expectation. Let's put it that way. Okay, let's talk about the Natural Nudes palette now. This palette is priced at 45 US dollars. This is a heavy duty cardboard packaging and it does still have a magnetic closure. This is a lot more compact than I thought it was gonna be when I initially saw pictures of it. I was imagining 
a much bigger palette. I'm gonna use the same Norvina palette here to give you an idea of the scale. This is just slightly smaller than the Norvina palette and it is slimmer as well. So here is the front cover and then when we open up there is a nice big mirror in here. I do like a palette that folds all the way over like this and then we see all the shades laid out from lightest to darkest. Typically a really uneven pan size like this drives me crazy, but I actually like the way this one's laid out. It seems very purposeful and since there's not a lot of wasted space, it definitely has a nice look to it. It doesn't bother me. I know some people might still have their eyeball twitching a little bit from this layout, but I actually like how the matte pans are larger than the shimmer pans. And these are set up sort of like little shadow duos. Of course, you don't have to use them that way, but I do like this layout. I think it's really user-friendly. We have a nice range here. We have some really cool tones. We've got some warmer tones, some neutrals. It's really well balanced. I like that they did bring a little bit of pink, a little bit of gold, since those are typically more neutral colors and they just play really well with the whole neutral color scheme. It's not just browns, has a little bit of depth. It's a little bit more dynamic than just an all brown palette. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the swatches of this palette now. Just like always, I'll show you both finger and brush swatches. I'm gonna swatch one row at a time. So first the top row, then the bottom row. All the swatches are done on the inside of my arm with no primer down first, just the shadow straight onto my arm. The finger swatches will be pictured on top and then each brush swatch will be directly below. For the brush swatches, I'll use my e.l.f. flat eyeshadow brush and I'll clean the brush off in between each shade using my Veramona color switch. That way there's no transfer between swatches. So let's take a look at those swatches now. Now that you've seen everything swatched, let's take a look at the demo. I'm gonna show you me using two of the Turn Up The Light face palettes. So I use both light and medium on my face. And of course I'm using the Natural Nudes palette on my eyes. And then I'll wrap up all my thoughts at the end. First, I used the Soft Focus Powder from the Light Palette to set my concealer. So under my eyes and then also the middle of my forehead and nose. Then I use the soft focus powder from the medium palette on a big fluffy brush to just go over the rest of my face just as an all over setting and blurring powder. Here's a close up of just the soft focus powders on my face. I think they look really nice. Next, I went to highlight. I used the glow shade from the light palette. First, I just put that right on top of my cheekbones. This definitely gives a really soft glow type of look. This isn't a super intense highlighter since it is that baked formula, but it does build up nicely. So here's just a little glimpse of that on my cheeks. Then I decided to put that a couple other places. I really wanted to go for a glowy look and see what this powder could do. So I put a little on my forehead, chin, and cupid's bow, and this is what the finished face makeup looks like. I am wearing a little bit of blush here, but otherwise it's mainly just these highlighting palettes on my face. Now we're moving into the eyeshadow. I'm first going to prime my eyes with my favorite eye base. It's the MAC Paint Pot in the shade Painterly. Then going into the palette, I use the shade Swan to set my eye base and give a nice smooth surface to work on. For my transition shade, I first chose this one called Seashell, and I really just built that up in the upper crease area, taking my time to blend that out. I do wanna use a lot of these shadows, so 
I'm just first blending out seashell, then I went in with the shade Nude, which is a little bit more neutral, and I put that right along my lower lash line with a small flat brush. Next, I took the shade Coco, and on a more detail fluffy brush, I built that up on the very outer corner of my eye. I do want a little bit of a smoky look with this, so adding a little depth there. And then I used the shade Sparkling Sand with my finger and just wiped that right across the rest of my lid. Next, I went into the shade Truffle and on a small pencil brush, I smudged that along my lash line on the outer part of both upper and lower lashes. This is sort of standing in in place of an eyeliner. I did wanna get a more sultry look and then I just went back in with that shade nude and sort of blend it out, blow out that lower lash line. I wanted to add a little bit more shine, so I took sugared chestnut on my pinky finger and added that to the very outer corner. That way I could get a little bit more shimmer. Then I went back in with seashell one more time to just blend out the crease and make sure that everything looks nice and smooth. Lastly, I used Glistening Snow on my pinky finger and put that right in the inner corner, curled my lashes, added some CoverGirl Exhibitionist mascara, and that's my finished look. This is a very basic neutral palette and therefore gave me a basic neutral look, but I really like the way it turned out. All the shadows performed well, and this is the kind of look I can see myself wearing again. As I played with these products, swatched them, used them on my actual face, my initial reaction really changed into a much different opinion. I thought that the face palettes, the Turn Up the Light highlighter palettes, were much more interesting, and those ended up not really being my favorite. I do like the Soft Focus Powder and the more glowy highlighter. I'm just not somebody who's a fan of glittery highlighters. I know a lot of people love that. A lot of people are looking for that. And they may have a different opinion of that Dazzle formula. Overall, I think I was just expecting something a little bit more intense from both of the highlighters. I think the soft focus powders are definitely the standout product of that palette. I'd love to see the soft focus powders come out individually, just compacts with a good 20, 30, 40 shades of that as a standalone product in the Born This Way line. I see myself being more drawn to that product and I think that would suit a lot more people's needs and I just think overall I would have preferred that to these four palettes. The eyeshadow palette I didn't have a ton of interest in. I just thought, you know, a neutral palette and hey, it is a neutral palette. It's There's no reason to pretend this is not a basic neutral palette. I do think the formulas in here are absolutely beautiful. I was particularly really, really happy with the mattes. I found them to be soft, blendable. They really show up on the eye, but they're not so pigmented and opaque and powdery that they're hard to control. Just a really gorgeous, buttery matte formula on here. I'm also happy with the shimmers. I do think there was a little bit of inconsistency between the different shades. Some of them were just one swipe metallic, other ones needed a little bit more building up. But overall, I'm happy with this palette. I like it a lot more than I thought I was going to. There's a great shade range in here, a lot of different undertones. I thought I was going to be disturbed by the uneven layout, but I actually think it's pretty smart, it's pretty user-friendly. I can see a lot of people enjoying this palette, whether you are a beginner or somebody that just has one eyeshadow palette and that's what you use every single day, or somebody who really loves makeup, uses a lot of makeup, does a lot of different looks, or a makeup artist. I see this palette appealing to a lot of those different groups, and that's something that I like to see in a product. When it has versatility, it has the power to be a really staple product, that's when I think you know, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. I'm glad that this palette is smaller than I thought it was gonna be. I'm glad that it is in this cardboard packaging. I see myself traveling with this. I see myself reaching for this when I want to pair a more neutral palette with a really bright colored single, grabbing a 
one of my colorful super shock shadows and then using this as sort of a basis for a pop of color type of look. The colors are something that we see a lot from Too Faced. They do a lot of neutrals and I think they do that for a reason. That's probably what their customers really like and buy the most. So this may not be the most trendy. It doesn't have a really unique color story, but it has the potential to do a lot of really classic looks and to be a staple and I really appreciate that about this palette. I didn't expect to like the eyeshadow palette more than the face palettes but that was my experience with these products. Now's the time when I want to hear what you think about these new Too Faced products. Is this a release that you're interested in or are you good on neutrals? You're not looking for any more neutrals. I always love to hear what you guys think too so please leave a comment down below especially if it is a respectful comment. I just want to say I so appreciate that 99.9% .9 of the time we have a good, thoughtful, respectful discussion down in my comment sections and I really owe a lot to you guys for that. So thank you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. <sighs> Let's just get this part over with. I'm so drained already. This makeup looks really good though. <laughs> Let's not get ourselves. As always for my swatches, swatches. Uh, what am I trying to say? <sighs> I feel like I just ran a marathon. I have a really hat. <laughs> What's that called? A powder foundation. <sighs> of those soft, po soft pocus, hocus pocus. I took a break to eat some sushi. Okay, now I'm gonna edit this video and then email my therapist before I post it to make sure that she knows we're on red alert. <laughs> I wish I was joking about that. I know everybody says, oh, you put yourself out there, but you know, everybody, everybody does that. When you choose to leave your house, you have effectively put yourself out there. So, you know, we're all, we're all in the same boat, really. I'm just as much of a human being as everybody else watching this, so, okay. Uh, bye. Bye. Mm, bye. Mm, bye. 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 <laughs> Wish me luck. Bye.